Recode reporting Twitter is planning layoffs that will affect most, if not all, departments. Our tech panel with me now on these latest developments. So we are here with Pete, Lori, John. Glad to have you all. What do you make of all right, Jack Dorsey, yeah. right? CEO, second time around, and now it seems like, okay, here's some changes. Yeah, and he's getting it out of the way early, that's for sure. I actually don't see this as all that dire in Twitter's sense. I mean, Twitter in general is kind of in a dire situation, but the, um, the after their IPO, and they IPO'd too early, I think everyone's pretty agreed on that, they were flailing around trying to figure out what products they would do, what sort of things they would do. So they went on a hiring spree, and now they're a little more focused. They kind of know the things that are working for them. Some of their other projects have already come to fruition. So this is kind of a clean if they house. IPO'd too early. It was just like they didn't have a follow-up. I mean, I love Twitter. I'm very vocal about that, but I think most journalists and media types do, and I'm not sure it's applicable to everybody else in the same way that Facebook is. What do you think of the layoffs? I'm going to read you a stat here. Yeah. 4,200 employees last quarter, which was more than double the 2,000 employees that it had in the second quarter of 2013. So apparently they went on a hiring binge at some point. Yeah, I like it. I mean, Jack is making some bold statements, right? He comes in, he launches moments, like the day after uh, he comes back. He then says the 140 character limit is not sacrosanct. And now Which I think is lame, for, for the record. I mean, right, wordsmiths everywhere. We love the, the modern haiku. But, but, now, but now he says, you know, 4,200 employees, 2,000 employees hired over the last two years. It's bloated. It's just too much. We're going uh, you know, to focus people. We're going to streamline that. Uh, I'd like to see him do it with uh, some sense of the structure and, and the vision going forward. Uh, but I, I applaud the move. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree if I don't if you don't mind me weighing oh. in here. I mean, I just think that the day it was announced he was going to take that CEO spot, it was official, no longer an interim position. The stock shot up. And now I think perhaps he felt, Jack Dorsey felt a little pressure to keep that momentum going. You showed us the stock chart there, and we're seeing Twitter finally come back. I mean, it's been a strong market, a broad market as well. But there you see, I mean, it's been tough going there for Twitter. And he's not hard wasting any grow. time. And it's hard to, to grow with keep Snapchat. giving us these positive catalysts yeah. to please the investors. All right, speaking of pleasing investors, you have to have top tech talent. So war is reaching a fever of pitch. Apple hiring some of Tesla's engineers. And in response, Tesla CEO Elon Musk told a German newspaper, those workers, nah, they weren't actually that good anyway. They have hired people we fired. We jokingly call Apple the Tesla graveyard. If you don't make it at Tesla, you go work at Apple. I'm not kidding. All right, John, you have run and are currently running a tech company. If you were at Apple, how offended would you be? Would you say, look, it's sour grapes, we're building our own car, and we're going to smoke you in five years? Or would you send your own private email to Elon Musk? I, I love Back this. I, I love Elon. The, the history here is fascinating. A year ago, there were acquisition talks between the two companies. Yeah. As early as May, six months ago, Musk, Musk says, I love it that Apple's getting into the cars. It's, it's great. The competition is terrific. And now he's saying it's a Tesla graveyard. I, I think what happened here is, you know, there's probably some delivery issues at Tesla. And I think uh, that coupled with the fact that they're going after the employees, which is is the gold here uh, really uh, made the gloves come off and uh, change uh, Musk's tune, uh, and we're in a cat fight. Nothing like a whining billionaire. Uh, it's big talk for someone who's only shipped six of those $140,000 <laughs> yeah, exactly. SUVs. Uh, right. He's right. like personally putting together in a garage somewhere, right? He doesn't seem to have cracked the manufacturing code yet. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, this is a, a bit of posturing. I think he's in such a tear right now with, with all the announcements with Tesla. Uh, they're going to announce autopilot soon for the, uh, the Model S. Um, you know, it's, it's chest thumping. But, um, you know, I, I, I think Apple, as always, will sit back. You say your thing and we'll come in. Yeah, well, you say your thing. We'll keep offering good packages to the people that we want to work here and we'll move on. So speaking of moving on, Amazon.com Fire Phone may be the unfortunate precursor to the new Fire TV. So, uh, Lori, the Fire Phone, as we know, just bit the dust, right? right? That's mm -hmm. bye. Now, TV seems to be having a few hitches and it's not like yeah. it's that easy a project. No, so it shouldn't be... Look, I think things are turning around for Amazon. They finally reported a profit. Hooray! So perhaps the streaming business isn't really, you know, what Amazon should spend its resources on. Right. But they want to have the pipes. They want to have the content. They want right, to spend. They have plenty of cash to spend on it, Hulu, but they have to re and, and by not, Netflix. I think, for Bezos to take Apple TV off the Amazon uh, website was just really in poor 
course, but then he kind of came back and said, like, well, did like he re- some, did he read? He, it was it was like a mini step back saying, like, well, it, with certain it's still applications. in poor form, yeah. I think, uh, by way, very of poor form and, and disingenuous, especially with, with Chromecast, when he kicked Chromecast out by saying that that it wasn't compatible with Prime, their Prime video product, because right. it's up to Amazon to build support for Chromecast, not Google. Uh, but the this is it gets the whole uh, but, but with the Fire TV uh, versus Prime. I mean, uh, Amazon is both a hardware and a software player in this space. And I think that leads to a lot of confusion here on there for them. Uh, because they seem to sort of put their app in random places, like it's not on Apple TV, uh, it's on a bunch of other hardware, it's kind of on well, Android. When everybody really. says, oh, Apple stock is at a high, but, you know, that is the Apple point. It's like no one's confused. The consumer's not confused and management is not confused. Uh, John, what's your take? Yeah, I, uh, Fire Phone uh, was horrible. Fire Tablet was horrible. Fire TV sounds pretty bad. I fire think it might Tablet be... was not horrible. I, I mean, clear. it was. They not... were actually pretty good at those tablets. I, I, it's time to fire the Fire. The TV. new Fire That's Tablets my... are terrible. Okay. Yeah. John's like, anything with fire on it? It's, yeah, we got He's a problem He's not even here. watching. Wait, yeah. is that Frankenstein? Like, fire. All right, yeah. like, just wrap it up. We're all out. All right, Pipa Jal, thank you very much. Laurie Rothman, John Broad, glad to have you here.